as many of you will know or not know who knows um it was three years ago last week that i lost shadow um so i thought i'd do a quick video um of all his like medical problems and what was wrong with him and why he was named Shadow the Unicorn and where my Instagram and YouTube all came about. Um, this is something that's not very easy for me to talk about. So there will be lots of videos um, that I've got to try and edit, which is gonna be um, difficult. Um, but yeah, I will try and do some voiceovers for you to explain what and how Shadow the Unicorn came about. As you can see behind me, this is one of my biggest dreams that I had when I had Shadow. Um, to have him at home, to come out the back door and see his little cheeky face looking over his stable door. Um, sadly, Shadow never got to do this with me. Um, but yeah, I'm very, he'd be very proud of what we have here. Um, and he would have had his special little stable. Which stable um, would have been his? The coolest one. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything to do with my Instagram. We've got 15.2 followers on Instagram and- Just 15.2. Is it 8,000 or- 15.2. 15.2 .2. 15 thousand followers on Instagram. Um, and quite a few followers here on YouTube. Um, now we also have four sponsors, which is absolutely insane, including one of Shadow's favorite things. That he was never um, allowed. Which he was never allowed, but the last week in hospital, he did have quite a few, which I've probably got a lot of videos that I would have added in. Um, but yeah, so we've got four sponsors now. So crazy amount of support, thanks to Shadow starting this all for me. So we bought Shadow in July 2015 and he was the most perfect first pony for me living a happy sport life and when I mean spoilt I mean spoilt teaching me everything I needed to learn about owning a horse riding a horse and most importantly caring for a horse Christmas day 2015 we turned up at the yard to see that Shadow had not pooed overnight which for any horse is a real worry by lunchtime, he had laid down and began flank watching. We ended up calling the emergency vet who admitted him to Bell Equine Hospital. After lots of tests, it was confirmed that Shad's had a severe sequel impaction and he was given treatment and starved in hope that the impaction would move on its own. Shad's was not happy about being starved. Um, I think he was starved for like three whole days or something, so just water. Um, we were told that his cecum could rupture on its own, which would kill Shadow, and surgery was not an option because his cecum was so enlarged. And as soon as they opened him up, it would have burst anyway, and he would have passed away. All we could do was sit and wait. Miraculously, Shadow began to pull through, slowly beginning to poo and eat again. His prognosis had been so poor that he's astonished the vets too. He was eventually discharged with a strict diet and care plan with a slow introduction back to work. The vet suggested we have cameras installed in his stable so we could watch him from home too and wherever we were. Sadly, after Shadow Seek and Colic, he began to have recurrent colics, which were most likely as a result from scarring in his guts from the Seek and Colic. We had to manage his input, output, turn out every little thing he did. However, each time he surprised us by springing back to his cheeky self. In 2016, Shadow's work was upped, the more experience I was getting, and wasn't so a beginner anymore. I actually got a little bit better. Um, but under saddle, his breathing became very laboured. Eventually, after some tests, he was diagnosed with COPD, which resulted in him having a nebulizer twice a day. And he even featured in the Equine Health magazine. Um, he did not like the nebulizer at all, um, but it was the only way that we could manage his COPD um, with the meds they were giving us. During a very hot summer in 2016, we commented to my instructor at the time that we were surprised how dry shadow saddle pads were and how he didn't appear to eat ever even sweat. After long discussions with several different vets, we were told that because shadow was a UK born and bred Connemara, that there was no way he wasn't sweating. 
we insisted that he was tested for anhydrosis as he was not a happy boy in the heat. Anhydrosis means you cannot sweat and it's extremely rare in horses in the UK and if a horse gets it they tend to be race horses and have it very mildly. Obviously Shadow was like the opposite to a race horse even though in the field he truly believed he was a race horse. Um, Shadow was given four increasing strengths of adrenaline on his neck, the strongest being that even horses with anhydrosis would sweat and the weakest being an average horse that would sweat. Um, Shad didn't react to any of the strength, meaning he had the most severe case of anhydrosis. He was unable to regulate temp his temperature like other horses do and could have easily got heat stroke and died. To this day, he is still part of a study in Miami where some of his hair follicles were sent for research. This was such a rare case that he is still often spoken about by numerous vets across the world. We were given lots of tips from the University of Miami of how to help Shadow cope with the heat, including cooling rugs, regular washing, washing down, fans, air conditioning in his stable and no more riding in the heat, which we did all of those things. As you can already tell, the odds were stacking up against Shad's, but he continued to prove everyone wrong and carried on like there was no problem. September 2017, Shadow was given his routine vaccine. Within hours, he had collapsed in the field while I was poo picking, which was a real shock to all of us. He was immediately rushed to Bell Equine again, where he spent a week fighting the reaction in his system. He again was very poorly with his infection markers through the roof. He actually developed neurological symptoms as a result of that. Yet again, he defied all lods and pulled through. And as he was galloping around the turnout pen at Bell, the head of internal medicine who was watching with us said, he really is a unicorn. This is when Shadow was named Shadow the Unicorn and everyone knew him by that. We decided to retire him from ridden work because he became quite doddery on his feet. Through 2018, Shad's continued to re struggle in the heat regardless of our management and still have these bouts of spasmodic colic. In September 2018, Shad's became quite poorly, so again the vet sent him up to Bell. His SAA infection markers were at 4,000, where a healthy horse should be zero, or a horse with an infection up to about 100. For 10 days, he was treated with numerous antibiotics, several scans, belly taps, blood tests, but no one could understand where the infection was coming from. Tim Mayer, who is now head of Beaver, came to us on the 10th day to say he felt that Shadow must have a small abscess internally that needed flushing or removing in a small procedure. At that point, we questioned if it was fair to put Shadow through surgery or not given his health problems. But Tim Mayer insisted, why wouldn't we, as it was a simple operation. Tim Mayer set the surgery date for the next morning, the 18th of September, and told us to come down in the afternoon to visit Shadow once he had recovered from the anaesthetic. <laughs> Tim called us to say Shadow was in theatre and he was about to start the procedure. The phone rang less than 15 minutes later with Tim telling us they would have to put Shadow to sleep and then there as when they opened him up he found he was totally riddled with cancerous tumours and would not have survived the week. No one was expecting this outcome, no one could believe he was this ill and had been hiding this from us all. I suppose that's what unicorns do.